Electrons are always moving, whizzing around in electrical wires and sparks and jumping from one orbital to the next in atoms. But what if you could take a single electron and confine it within a box? What would it look like? What color would it be? And what would happen when you release it from that box? Whoa, look at that, look at that sparkle. I'm gonna put this ball in a box and give it some energy so it bounces around. It can be found anywhere within the box with equal probability when I check where it is. So if I take some still frames of this bouncing around in slow motion, you'll see that there's not any place in the box where it has higher probability of being. But something weird happens when the particle and the box get smaller. So if we were to shrink this ball and box down to only a few nanometers, then every time we try to check where the ball was, we would find that there are certain spots where we usually find it, and there are certain spots where we never find it. If I made a 3D graph about the probability of finding the particle in a certain spot in the box, it would look like this. The darker areas are the areas where I'm likely to find it and the lighter areas are where I never find the particle when I check where it is in the box. Suddenly this particle that used to just act like a ball in a box that could be anywhere when I checked where it was, suddenly has these nodes where it's usually found and never found. If I graph these probable locations of the ball in one dimension, it would look like this. It looks exactly like a wave. So when small particles are trapped in a small box, they start to look like waves instead of particles. In 1929, the French physicist Louis de Broglie proposed that since light showed particle and wave-like behavior, perhaps any particle could show the same type of behavior. This equation is known as the de Broglie wavelength equation. It relates the momentum of a particle to its associated wavelength. So the more momentum a particle has, the smaller the wavelength. So for our particle in a box, when we give it more momentum, it has a bunch more nodes within the box. And with this equation, we can see why when we had a macroscopic ball in a big box, it was equally probable to be found anywhere within the box because the distance between the nodes and the high probability areas were so squished together that it was just completely smooth throughout the whole box. So you couldn't even see the peaks and valleys in your probability locations. Before we continue, when life gets harder than quantum physics, it's nice to know that there's help out there. So I want to take a minute to thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. These last few years have been difficult for everyone. And one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via messaging, phone, or video calls. You can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility at a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab, or you can click the link in the description. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. At this point, this all sounds very theoretical. How could you ever confine an electron to a tiny nanometer sized box? And if so, how could you even check that it's really acting like a wave inside the box? Well, it just so happens that I have a bunch of tiny little particles, in this case electrons, trapped in some tiny boxes. These are my particles in a box. So believe it or not, this is regular table salt that has no dyes or additives in any way to make it this orange color. But the reason it's orange is because it's been blasted with gamma rays from a cobalt 60 source. Yep, tastes like salt. On the bottle here, it says this was exposed to 300 kilorads of gamma radiation. That is a lot of radiation. Those are the levels you get inside nuclear reactors, so it's far beyond the lethal dose for humans. But luckily, it itself isn't radioactive after it's been blasted with radiation. And we're gonna use this to test out this quantum theory. Regular sodium chloride looks like this. It has sodium and chloride ions in a regular pattern. But if you take this sodium and blast it with gamma rays, then some of these gamma rays will knock electrons off the chlorine ions. 
These chlorine atoms will find another chlorine atom and make a chlorine molecule that just hangs out in the crystal lattice. But the electron that got knocked off gets stuck where the chlorine atom used to be. It's trapped by these sodium atoms surrounding it. They're all attracting it equally, so the electron is literally trapped in a box of sodium ions and it can't go anywhere. These trapped electrons are called F centers or FARB centers where FARB is German for color. In this case, it gives the salt an orange color. But why would trapped electrons have an orange color like this? Well, it's because the trapped electrons can only exist at certain frequencies within the cube. For example, if I shake a string that's trapped within a certain length, it can only resonate at certain frequencies. If I try to shake it at some other frequency, then it doesn't absorb that energy, but it will only absorb frequencies that match its resonant frequency. Well, the electron does the same thing within that box. It's trapped as a wave and at its base energy level. So the only energy it can absorb is if it has the right frequency to knock the electron up to its next energy state. In this case, blue light can knock it up to its next energy state. So the electrons are absorbing bluish light from the white light in the room. And when you remove blue light from white light, it makes orange light. So we're seeing this orange light, so it looks orange. If the tiny box that the electron is trapped in had a different size, it would be able to absorb different frequencies of light and resonate at different energies. So if you take other salt and trap electrons in their lattice, then they'll absorb different colors of light. In fact, if you make a graph of the colors of light that these different crystals absorb when you've irradiated them to make these F centers, then you'll find something beautiful. It exactly matches what would be expected from the wave properties of the electron trapped within these different sized boxes. In one of the very few equations you can solve analytically in quantum mechanics, the wavelength of an electron versus the size of box is given by this equation. The prediction for the first excitation of an electron in a box versus the size of a box is the dotted line here. And the circles are the actual values taken from maximum absorbed light in these different irradiated crystals. It's amazing to see that these crazy predictions from quantum mechanics actually match what we see in the real world. So these truly are electrons trapped in a box. And in our case, because of the size of the box, they're orange. Now these electrons have been trapped in these boxes for a long time, and they'll stay trapped for several years. But if we can heat up the salt hot enough, then the electrons will eventually get enough energy that they'll escape the box and find their way back to the chlorine molecules. And when that happens, they'll release their energy as visible light. So let's watch what happens when I drop the salt on this hot plate. Whoa, look at that, look at that sparkle. So I'm just dropping grains of it onto the hot plate and it's sparkling. That is so cool. Okay, let's do a bunch at once. Whoa, look how long that's glowing. So when I turn the lights on, you can see what this looks like. See how the salt has just turned white now. So as I drop the orange salt on it, it turns white. So we've released all the electrons now, so it turns back into its regular translucent color. Let's see if we can do it with just a bit more light here and see if we can see the color change with the light coming off of it. Oh, you can, look at that. Oh, that's cool. See how it gets brighter and then turns to white? So you can see this magical sparkle as I drop the salt on the hot plate as the electrons are released from their box where they've been imprisoned for years. That is so cool. Can't you just hear the electrons thanking me from freeing them from their eternal prison? And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button so you can see my latest videos when they come out. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.